play a game. Okay. Have you ever seen Saw? <laughs> I want to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> Their bodies are so interesting. Like this cut right here, and then how definitively angular this part is. Looks like a telly that like you spilled heavy metal on. <laughs> Synchronicity on three. One, two, three. Synchronicity. Hey everyone, it's Gregory James here. And today I'm joined by my dear friend and fellow Vola artist, Joshua Powell. Hello. What's up, dude? Just living the life. Josh and I wanted to get together and chat a little bit about our music, friendship throughout the years, why we chose Vola guitars, and some of our influences, and maybe play a couple of licks here or there. Good known to play a lick. Sweet. Tell us a little bit about your music, kind of your direction, where you've been, where you are now. Absolutely. Um, Joshua Powell is the name of my project. It's also the name of myself. Um, <laughs> people get really confused about that, right? Like, do you ever expect to go see Bruce Springsteen and be like, what the hell, who are these other eight people on stage? I didn't see Bruce. It's like, that guy. It's a, it's, a, it's a music project. So I started playing under my own name in 2011. Halloween in a basement coffee shop of Anderson University. 2013 through probably 17, we're on tour most of that time. Mm -hmm. We've played over 900 shows in 43 states and three countries. Covered um, some serious ground. <laughs> Both territorially, like geographically, but also, uh, as you know, like genre-wise. In our incarnation now, it consists of Josh Townsend on bass, Jacob Powell, my brother on drums, and myself. On guitar, just doing a nice sleek power trio. Nice. Yeah. Taking it back to the Blink 32 roots. Yeah. You know, things that formed us. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Over the years, you know, we started our first several years uh, pretty much in the wake of the Genericana explosion. Mm -hmm. you, remember, you remember when hipsters were a thing? <laughs> Do you remember uh, when all music was stumped and clapping? Right. <laughs> 2012. We were a great year. You know, over the years, uh, mostly through the touring and um, being exposed to all different scenes and peoples across the country for many years. Uh, Swung a weed. Warm. And, uh, warm. <laughs> <laughs> and then realizing, uh, I think we're like done with this um, flannel ass music. Mm -hmm. uh, and. <laughs> By the time we put out uh, Alyosha in 2013, that record was like a lot more stoned and a little bit more political. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, getting into electric a lot more, pressing into effects and sound design and more psychedelic textures. Um, our record, Psychotropic, was a big paradigm shift, where mm -hmm. it's pretty much, if there was any folk there, it was definitely hidden inside of the Blade Runner movie. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And the plague had us all like uh, in this little house on the east side of Indianapolis to make a uh, skeleton party, which, you know, everyone made a COVID record. But mm -hmm. that one was a uh, huge surprise for us because it's the one that helped us get signed to Romance Records. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've been a huge like proponent in our corner and really done a lot to push the band across these various like genre lily pads we'd be hopping. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. You'd be hopping. <laughs> the new record that we're making is like metal as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like it is very unapologetically. It's got screams and growls and breakdowns and an unironic, completely like sincere homage to like the metal core mm -hmm. and new metal and stuff that we grew up on and yeah so um i don't know it's interesting too because like i'll still go on tour a lot solo mm -hmm. and play my songs acoustically but the band now has coalesced to the power trio and we're playing the heaviest uh most fun music of our career mm -hmm. and after that who knows yeah you know the sky's the limit yeah so tell us about some of your influences throughout the years and things that are inspiring you now yeah man that's a it's a moving target uh, we you know talked about like kind of Portal hopping across genres all over the years. I've been loving Neil Young since I mm. had years. Uh, and then, you know, the way that Boney Vare evolved as an artist, each album felt like a statement, felt like an era, mm -hmm. and it started in the same kind of folky place that we started, but by the second album, there was like a Civil War double bass breakdown mm -hmm. in it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he went electronic, and people like Sufjan Stevens, who followed that same sort of itinerant path from the analog into the digital and maybe back, have always inspired me mm -hmm. by their versatility. But bands like Under Oath that touched my friggin' soul mm -hmm. uh, at age 15. You know, to the point where even here we are 15 plus years later, and you and I went to see Under Oath a couple yeah. months back with Three Friends. What a friggin' show. Mm -hmm. Loath, huge influence yes. on me. And on some of the Blindfold to Leave stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, some of the bands that created their own brand of heavy and were able to find like an iconic niche within a genre that can 
become formulaic because of its like small subset of that demographic. A band like Norma Jean, or to take it far afield, a band like Korn, mm -hmm. there's a million bands that sound like the Devil Wears Prada post the Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. No one sounds like Korn without you being like, you're doing a Korn! Yeah, you're, you're doing a Korn! Yeah. Stop! Right. Be original! <laughs> Be, <yeah. laughs> The way that a band like Deftones is going to be so melodic and so heavy and mm -hmm. create atmosphere and have dynamics while still pummeling you. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love that versatility mm -hmm. and that breadth of genre and dynamic. I came into that metal scene from the pop punk scene, mm -hmm. like you and I have that in common. Mm -hmm. We were asked to go on stream the prayer tour at one point, like it seemed like, oh this might be a thing. No, I'm going to college. Mm -hmm. Which is where we met and yeah. started, uh, I think, uh, I don't remember if it was a Blink song or a Lil Wayne song. <laughs> Yeah, I walked into your dorm room and it was a Blink song, 100%. I was just like, <laughs> we're going to be friends and have been for over a decade now. I think we both had booked individual coffee shop shows and then we just decided, well, let's just do the show together. Mm -hmm. Just acoustic boys at the time, mm -hmm. doing a little pull-off harmony bits. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Dad Gat Tuning was like our oh, friend, but... Man, did we write some dad lights. We <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't get enough. No, I don't think you had a standard tuned guitar. No, but you. you're the one, you, you did that to me. <laughs> that, was, that was your fault. Broke. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but we've continued that effort and, yeah. um, you know, we've both gone our separate ways uh, still to this day. You've talked about your project. Yeah. I'm playing in Annapurna primarily. Great. Uh, but a couple months ago, we decided to get the boys back together and start writing some new tunes yeah. under our moniker Blindfold the Leaves. Which had never recorded or published anything back in the aughts. It's not even like there's a big nostalgia. No one's being like, bring back Blindfold the Leaves. No one remembers No one's <laughs> asking for it at all. <laughs> but we, you know, uh, our bassist Ryan Zagetti, I was on solo tour mm -hmm. a few months back and got crazy with him in New York one night. I was staying, in, I was staying on his couch in Manhattan. And, and we had a couple drinks, and I was like, just get the band back together. <laughs> we call you up in the middle of the night. Right. And of course, you're just like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm up. And then with um, my brother Jacob uh, living with me and having a studio here, just mm -hmm. like the perfect thing to plug in so we could all get together in like an intensive four day thing and just be like, let's try to make as much music as we can mm -hmm. with these limitations, yeah. which made it really cool and special and like of the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah super stoked about where it's going and yeah. while it is very much a passion project yeah we feel pretty strongly about it and it's yeah we're gonna put the songs out and see how they do man because mm -hmm. when we were listening back to this mix like oh this might this could be a thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh okay so how did how did you begin your journey with full guitars so i found them through the band kadinja a french metal band unbelievably talented and their guitarist Pierre had a signature seven string. Mm. When I heard his, there was something so unique mm. about it. He had uh, the HSS set up and it had like, this growly, throaty, split coil kind of sound that I have never heard in mm. another guitar before. And I was just hooked. Yeah. So there was a local shop uh, up in Indiana, actually right across the river that sold them. and. There was only a couple stores in that region that carried Bola, and I was so pumped to be able to go and try them out. So uh, yeah, I sold a lot of other gear to, to bring that guitar home. It was the nicest guitar I've ever owned at that point, mm -hmm. and so that made it special too. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and it continues to be that way too as I try different models. I just, I feel like I develop a, a connection with them. Uh, but eventually, there is uh, yet another store in Louisville called Mom's Music, Love and Mom's music. amazing yeah, place, amazing story. people. And I was in there playing one day, and their owner Jeff saw me playing a bola, asked me how I liked it, and I was just going on and on about <laughs> it. And uh, he offered me a partnership with the store to go in and start making videos and help them, you know, try to get the word out about yeah. these guitars. And I think that really speaks to them about their connection with the music community in Louisville yeah. and their passion for helping smaller brands too. You yeah. know, it's a big music store and they took the time and, and made the effort to put that out there. Yeah. And that meant a lot to me. Eventually, Jeff introduced me to Greg from Bola as well uh, and developed a connection from there. And so I've been working alongside them for a couple of years now, which has yeah. been amazing. Cool uh, to watch too. Yeah. I knew you were a fan before you got involved with mm -hmm. the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been really special and humbling. Now that we've talked a little bit about my background, yeah. 
Tell me about your experience with these guitars so far. I watched you get hyped about the brand, and so I thought, well, there, there's gotta be something to it. Really, when we did the, the Blindfold Belief sessions together in October, and you brought up a whole fleet of Volo instruments for us to experiment with, um, you know, I've spent a lot of money on guitars over the years, and I have a lot of guitars. Yeah. But uh, it happened. We, we picked up these, and I, so many of the times I was playing yours, and I was like, this already, let's just, Keep going with this one. <laughs> so when there was an opportunity to get this partnership with Vola, of course I look at the other options, but you're like, I think that the Vesti would be really good for you. <laughs> and opening this uh, was insane. For one, it's like a Teletype build, right? So it reminds me, it feels very like familiar, mm -hmm. and the weight of it, the look of it, um, and just the general feel. But Vola's, their bodies are so interesting. Like this cut right here, and then how definitively angular this part is, looks like a telly that like you spilled heavy metal on. <laughs> <laughs> this modern C neck is something that you've had to explain to me at length, but the, <laughs> how it feels from here to here changes so much and my hand didn't know that it wanted that. Mm -hmm. I played, played a sweet pick lick on this as soon as I pulled it out of the box and I was like, wait a second, I can't sweep. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's in this thing? <laughs> this is one of those times where any guitarist knows. Like sometimes you'll pick up an instrument and you'll start playing like better on this guitar than I am on my guitar. Mm -hmm. Played a bunch of volas like from this family and mm -hmm. they they feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's incredible. Plus, this little feature with the gain boost we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I've got a clean boost on my board. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple gain stages. I was playing that gig with Mother the band the other night, and I just popped that up. That's just the 10 dB I need. Mm -hmm. And having that versatility on my foot and on the guitar gives you that much more space to work with volume-wise live if you're listening. Yeah, just a little bit more. Plus, with these two different pickups, like the the tone versatility from here to here. This one is so warm, and this one is so bright, mm -hmm. and this one is, uh, you know, Goldilocks. Yeah, <laughs> the perfect motion around it. Love it, and you just got to play it live two nights in a row, yeah? Yeah, we, well, I played it with um, Joshua Powell, uh, our, our band, um, on Friday night at the Lo-Fi with Mike Mains and the Branches, playing some of the heavier stuff, mm -hmm. and the very next night played it at Avon with Mother of the Band, doing like very like folk, indie rock, sort of a, more of a country style guitar playing, mm -hmm. and same rigs, same guitar, I mean, it was just... You know, two deep. totally different applications. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, it's respectable enough to be a toy at that. Then you flip it over, you're like, no, yeah. It's, it's also mean. It's mean. Yeah. <laughs> also got attitude. Tough as nails. <laughs> tough as nails on three. One, two, three. Tough, tough as nails. Bola. Tough, tough as nails. <laughs> I want to play a game. Okay. Have you ever seen Saw? <laughs> I want to play a game. <laughs> The game is three favorite licks. Let's play them. Talk about them. Okay. What are your three? I want to throw some credit to Under Oath. In regards to myself, opening and find a great line for me, uh, just iconic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like captures the sound of an era. Also, as the very first thing that you hear on the record, immediately grabs you. Yeah. It comes out of the gate pretty quick. Another instance in which somebody redefined what heavy could sound like, and mm -hmm. that guitar is so chaotic. I couldn't tell what any of the chords were or mm -hmm. what signature it was in. It was just gross. Yeah. It was just like, oh, something, something is about to happen. <laughs> What's number two? I guess it's a little bit more of a little solo bit than the lick itself. Mm -hmm. Love the Christian punk band Slee Shoot. Mm -hmm. They're super underrated. Instrumentally, I thought they were super advanced. Mm -hmm. like, everyone in that band was really good and technically skilled, which is not really part of punk usually. And when I heard the opening line from Carpenteria at uh, 14 years old, I was like, that's the coolest guitar playing I've ever heard mm -hmm. in my life. <laughs> I was probably like 30 years old when I realized I should go back and listen to Carpenteria. I right. bet I can play that now. <laughs> What's amazing about it is that it's a really cool expressive solo that when you break it down, it's all just rudiments. And once you recognize like, oh, this scale can be played here and here, you go, mm -hmm. I can recognize all the modular components of this and put them together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now I can play <laughs> Do it. <laughs> What's 
number three? For number three, I want to showcase um, some of the stuff that is on our forthcoming record. Mm -hmm. we, our first single is called Coffin Club. It has some cool guitar bits in it, but writing the breakdown for that is one of the things that I've been proudest of in my musical career so far. It's just, it's just really interesting. There's a lot of little, little tricks and little, you know, nothing insane is happening, but musically, it's a charcuterie board of little. A little metal to get stuck in your teeth. I love it. <laughs> if a man dies, shall he live again? I play the game too. Yeah, sweet. What are your what are what are your three licks? So my first one is not even really a lick. It's just something that I've seen a lot of primarily gospel and neo soul guitarists do. It's almost a type of like diminished walk up. And so that's my first choice. <laughs> Too. So my second one, uh, going back to the you know nostalgia in us, is 96 Quite Bitter Beings by CKY. <laughs> that was one of those riffs that when I heard it for the first time, it it moved me. Yeah. Like, that was a life-changing moment. Plus, for me. Tony Hawk broke it. Exactly. Come on. I know. <laughs> it's like, it was like a two-hitter. Two um, yeah, it was incredibly impactful for me, and still to this day when I hear it, it hits just as hard for me. Yeah, man. So that's number two. Cool. You got a third one for me? Yeah. My third one is kind of like a Rick Graham inspired lick. I got into his playing and kind of discovered his channel uh, about four years ago, five years ago. And he has been my biggest influence in terms of how I pull phrasings and kind of like wide intervallic shapes as well. So I'll play a couple ideas that I've learned from him and kind of yeah. adapted in my own capacity. Nice. Yeah. Well, dude, it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out. Uh, you know, I always look forward to this when we get to spend time, especially talking about music, making music. It's always a really cool experience. Yeah. And, um, awesome. But I'm really excited for you to be able to, you know, showcase this instrument and hearing that you connect with it is also really encouraging too. Uh, we're stoked to have you as part of the Volal family. Feels so good. Yeah, a dream come true. Thanks for bringing me into the fold, and I'm, I'm excited to get to partner and collaborate with a brand that actually like garners belief. You know, it's like, oh yeah, it's actually. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be a part of that. Yeah. You know? Well, thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. I uh, look forward to Josh's new record coming. We have a project called Blindfold the Leaves and we'll be dropping some music. Yeah. Annapurna is gonna be releasing some music at some point or another too. So many good things to come. We'll go ahead and drop some links below to our music and all of our social media as well so you can follow along the journey. Joshua, as always, been a pleasure my friend. Like what, brother? Thanks for bringing me in. Appreciate you, man. Absolutely. We'll see you all soon. Peace.